Hi, it's Matt Dolby, and uh, this is going to be a series where I talk about fitness. Um, specifically about myself trying to keep fit, what's working for me, what isn't, and just uh, kind of personal reflections, what I enjoy and what I don't. What it's not going to be is um, a fitness guide. I'm not going to tell you how you should be exercising, how you should be eating, uh, what you should be doing. Um, I don't know enough about that. There are plenty of um, professional guides and apps and, and information out there from people who do know what they're doing. Um, I'd also advise if you're thinking of taking up a program of exercise, particularly anything um, strenuous, then do talk to your GP. Um, especially if, if, like myself, you're kind of middle-aged or older, um, because, you know, you want, you want to make sure that you're not just throwing yourself into something that's going to do you uh, a lot of harm. Um, what I want to start with in this programme is talk about uh, my, my background with exercise uh, and what's kind of happened in recent years. And particularly uh, last year I did a very challenging uh, run and then sort of dropped off the exercise and had uh, a period of, of six months where I did really nothing at all um, and put on some weight which I've now started to try and get rid of. So going back to childhood, um, my parents were healthy, they they walked a lot and we didn't have things like, like TV so a lot of our entertainment was from uh, physical exercise, walking, playing cricket in the garden, those sorts of things. And once we moved to the countryside, once my father became a vicar of a, uh, a countryside parish, then I had access uh, access to mountains and, uh, and and hills. And so walks of three to six hours became quite routine, especially in summer. And at, at the height of summer, during summer holidays from school, then walks of up to 10 hours were not unknown for me. So there was always um, that from, from about the age of 10 onwards. Then at about 14, 15, I started to bring in uh, a medicine ball into, into my exercise and to try and exercise uh, every morning. So that became part of my regime. Now, I wasn't particularly sporty. I'm not, I'm not a fan of sports. I don't like watching sports. I don't, I've never played competitive sports, uh, really other than at school. Uh, so that was of no interest to me, but it was just a sense of looking after yourself, keeping healthy, um, and, and yeah, just feeling, just feeling fit and being able to to do those walks that I enjoyed. Um, so that was always there. And, and then once I got to about the age of 20, 21, uh, I was doing some physical labouring. I was working uh, as a gardener and a caretaker. And, and gardening was quite often quite, quite physical work. It was also where I uh, probably damaged my back and since then I've had uh, fairly, uh, fairly severe sciatica at times, although I think the last real, the last real big problem with it was about 10 years ago. Um, and uh, that seems to have, seems to have been overcome by exercise, I think. Similar problem um, with my knees. Um, for years, I would wake up and find that my legs, my knees seemed to have popped out of joint. When I went to see my GP, I was told it was that my uh, kneecaps were kind of moving about a bit. And that the problem simply was that there was not enough muscle supporting them on, on either side. And really, I needed to put on some, some weight and to make sure that they got properly exercised. Um, and again, I, the last time I had a problem with those was probably now, 
yeah, 10, maybe 15 years ago. <coughs> and, and, and after about 25, once I moved to um, Cardiff, I continued walking as much as I could there and again here in Manchester and using using dumbbells and using exercises, initially following exercises from books. Now, while that can be fine, it's, it really needs some preparation on your part because otherwise you just end up following the same routine week after week, um, month after month, and it gets... It gets boring. You, you, I mean, you obviously reach a kind of limitation of, of, of the exercise. You, you find that the exercises you're doing are not challenging anymore. You're not, you're not developing. I mean, I, I don't ever particularly want a, a kind of massive body. That would be, wouldn't, wouldn't be me. It wouldn't, it wouldn't work. It wouldn't look good. And I'm, I'm, I'm now forty-seven. At a certain point, if you're that bulky, that is, it's going to be a lot of work to maintain, and it's going to turn to going to turn to fat. I don't, I don't, you know, want that. Um, so now, I was I was talking about uh, books. So now, um, having for a long time used uh, a British Army fitness series that was given away free in the Guardian and then was published later as a book. In 2015, um, I was finding it difficult to motivate myself to keep going with that. Um, and other exercise books I'd, I'd got rid of. The exercises were, were challenging and fine, but I'd been using that book for nearly a decade. And the only other things that I had around were sort of exercises to, to look after my back. So I felt that I needed to start pushing that a little further. So I looked into in, into apps, and, and there are a variety of apps that I used, and I started to use those around uh, November 2015, just at the, at the beginning of that month. And... What I what I used initially is is largely what I I still have now, although I can see myself changing them at, at some later stage. So I, I, it started with uh, a couch to five k uh, running app. Um, there are a lot of these. There are a lot of versions of this program. It's something that takes you from uh, not running at all to. Uh, running up to up to 5k for about half an hour and uh, it, it, it runs over around around about eight weeks um, although it can be longer you can repeat weeks uh, I don't use that running app anymore because I've now got gotten into the habit of, of running and I'll talk about what my exercise program is um, in, in a moment um, but that was that was very useful. It was something where you could have music on, you could just have the uh, the app. Um, and my relationship to running has been odd. As I say, I was never uh, I was never good at sports at school. I wasn't interested, and I'm still not. I, I don't particularly watch athletics or have any great interest in it. But running. Uh, Running, I always kind of looked on, on, on jogging as kind of silly. Um, it, it didn't surprise me that, that someone as dorky as Mick Jagger, for instance, would, would be a jogger. I mean, of course, he's a, of course he'd be a jogger. Um, but uh, running itself, kind of uh, as an expression of joy for, you know, sort of maybe five, ten steps, was was fine and, that's the, and it still kind of is um, but I had no particular urge to to run but it seemed to me that it might be a, a good way of um, 
helping lose lose weight because I was over the weight that I that I wanted to be and that I'd been for most of my adult life. And what I found um, doing running was that I actually enjoyed it, and particularly once the distances got longer, it it can still be painful. You can find um, sometimes your feet get a bit uh, sore. Or if you've been doing other exercises, perhaps your your calves or your um, quadriceps or whatever get very um, achy. But mostly, I find once I pass about forty-five minutes to an hour, it feels like I can just keep going. And also, my perception of time changes. It. it becomes much more telescoped in the sense sense of self starts to fall out. Sometimes you you come back to yourself, but other times it's just the physical process, it's the physical action of running. Then you might be thinking about your body, you might be thinking about your action, you might be thinking about uh, how much further do I have to go, how much longer is this going on, and then you're out of that and you're thinking about something else or you're thinking about the, the landscape that you're running through or you're thinking about actually I'm sure this street was longer but I've, I've already got to the end or again sometimes self and self-consciousness drops out and then you're not really aware of anything much until 10, 15, 20 minutes later and suddenly it's like oh Okay, I'm, I'm here now, um, still got a long way to go, but I feel like I don't want to, I don't want to stop. And sometimes you might stop for whatever reason, or you might try and walk and you think, this really doesn't feel very natural, I need to be running again. Um, and it, it's quite a perversely kind of meditative um, process. It's not quite for me like um, seated meditation uh, where I'm, I'm sat with my eyes closed where I have very vivid visual and uh, uh, auditory hallucinations. There, there's a, a very definite um, hypnagogic hallucination effect happening there and at night, but it, it, it's it's not like that, it's not like I'm completely somewhere else. But the... it's almost like a kind of rhythmic driving uh, through the running as well as... Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know what else, but, but there's, there's something that's sort of taking you out of yourself and, and out of the moment, and it's altering your perception of time. So that was the first app that I was using, um, was the running app. And, and, uh, I then also used, started to use uh, a, a Dumbbells app. Um, this one doesn't uh, integrate terribly well with the other stuff on my phone. Um, what I have on my phone is I've got uh, Google Fit. I'm sure there are other... Uh, fitness pro fitness trackers that you can get for your phone, um, most of which or some of which I, I will integrate with other fitness apps that you have. This certainly automatically tracks my walking if, as long as I'm carrying it and my, and my running, and it integrates also with one of the other the other apps to record things. It doesn't integrate though with this uh, dumbbells app. Um, um, the dumbbells app is fine. It's just that I've always used dumbbells, and I have um, some dumbbells here at home. Um, so um, that that was was part of it. I actually use it less than the third app, which is one that I subscribe to. This one is called uh, Swerkit, but I'm sure there are others that do very much the same kind of thing. This one has. It's got a range of things that you can 
this, this one I, I subscribe to, but at a, at a basic subscription, there's a, a premium subscription that, that will unlock further exercises, but a lot of that kind of stuff I can find online at different sources from, from, from different people. Um, so this one has, essentially it's got four different classes of exercise. Um, so I, I tend to use this on uh, Monday, Wednesday and Friday. And what I'll do is, at, at the moment, because I'm, I exercise in the morning, I find it easier to exercise in the morning. Uh, it doesn't then occupy my evening. It, it just means I have to get up earlier than I'd like. But it means I get up, I tend to do then uh, nine minutes of, of stretches, uh, stretching exercises, that's one of the four groups of, of exercises that it's broken down into. So I tend to do nine minutes of stretches to, to warm up and get ready. I then do nine minutes of cardio, and I tend to do the cardio I had been doing the cardio third, I'm now doing it second, simply because it's, it's very testing and it can be very painful, um, or at least exhausting um, in, in, in the short term, and I, I, I quite like to get it out of the way. Um, and I'll then... Uh, so it'll so be nine minutes of cardio. Straight after that, there's nine minutes of strength exercises. Now, some of the strength and cardio exercises are kind of the same. And you, you don't know what you're going to get. It, each of these draws from a, a, a palette of exercises. And it, it kind of changes up the order uh, every day. So it's not always going to be the same. And of course, some of the strength and cardio exercises are the same. So you might get one um, cropping up twice in a day. That's fine. Um, unless it's one that you don't like. You, what you're always going to find is there are going to be things that might not be the most testing. They might not be the most difficult, but they're just... They're just annoying. It comes up and you're just like, oh. God, not this. Um, and with me, strangely enough, because I, I did used to quite like them, at the moment it's, it's burpees. Whenever burpees come up, I'm like, oh, fuck this. Um, but, but I carry on with that. And then the one which is more predictable, which is fine, as a way to cool down, there's three and a half minutes of uh, yoga. I could do um, different yoga routines, some of which will be longer, but uh, again, it's a question of time. So it's about half an hour um, on Monday, Wednesday and Friday. Um, I, I would suggest looking at, at what apps work for you, what things, what, 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 what kind of exercises they have, what you want to do, and What you what you're going what you're going to get with the app? Whether you're going to have to pay for something more, um, something that's free might well be fine, but it will it will probably tend to have a limited palette of things. It might also then have further exercises that you have to pay for. Um, with this one, I started subscribing because. By subscribing, you get a, a, a good range of exercises. And at that time, as far as I was aware, it didn't have a kind of premium thing. It's now got a kind of premium subscription where you can buy in additional programs. Um, I haven't looked into what that costs. I don't particularly want to pay any more than I am at the moment. If that changes, I might have to look at other apps. Um, but look, look for reviews. Look for, uh, look for reviews by magazines. Look for reviews um, in the app store. Um, see what, what 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 people say. See what the, the app offers, and, and go with that. So that's that's three days a week, starting on on Monday, alternating and alternating with those 
on Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday is uh, running. So on Tuesday and Thursday, it's uh, a half hour a run. It's, it's a very short run. Um, out of my front door, kind of round Trafford, uh, touching on Hume, and then back here to, to Wally Range. Uh, on Saturday, or if I don't have time on Saturday, if I'm, for instance, going to see family, then uh, on Sunday, uh, but it's at any rate on the weekend, normally Saturday, I will try to do a longer run. And by longer run, I mean normally from an hour and a half to up to three hours. So three hours would be from here um, to Stockport and back. So probably uh, Stockport on the uh, on the Mersey and then back on the Fallowfield Loop or, or say in the reverse. Um, or as I did yesterday, um, a, a two hour run, a much longer run than I thought actually. It was a, 22 kilometres, just a little over. And that was going from here in, in Wally Range out to Piccadilly, um, or the bottom of Piccadilly Store Street. Up um, Store Street, there's a, 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 a short, steep street, I think it's Jutland Street, um, up there, onto the Ashton Canal. Follow the Ashton Canal up to uh, Openshaw and an open shore, there's a turn right, and you go down through um, through Gorton, past Gorton Station, and almost to Gorton Reservoir, but then you join the top of the Fallowfield Loop. And then I came right down the Fallowfield Loop. Um, essentially, where I joined the Fallowfield Loop, or a little before it, is the highest point of the run. So the, the I think I, I was going from around here is around 30 metres above sea level and that peak point is 80 metres above sea level so it's, it's a climb of, of 50 metres it's not massive but it's, this is Manchester um, so around there is, is the highest point and then the run back is predominantly downhill it, again it's just a decline of, of 50 metres um, so followed the Fallowfield loop, down to Fallowfield, um, came, came off where it, where it breaks, then rejoined it, where it restarts, and followed it through to Chorlton. Um, I actually could have followed it, it right to the end, crossed the tram tracks and come out near the, the Morrisons in Chorlton, but actually I um, went up the stairs at uh, Wubber Road Station because there, it, there's a relatively short cut back home and it was a minute over, a, a minute over uh, two hours uh, as a run and uh, some distance over 22 kilometres. So I'm, I was quite happy with that, it was around about 11 kilometres an hour speed which is close to what I was getting to last year. Um, so, uh, yeah, uh, so I, I picked up these, these apps, these are what I pretty much started with in November last year. I did look at, there's, there's an NHS, uh, fitness app, which is actually more of a, it's actually more of a podcast, really, and that takes you through some, through some simple exercises. It was not... Although I was, I felt I was out of shape and, and overweight, it was not challenging enough for me. It, it wasn't testing me, it was very, very gentle. It, there were some things that were slightly testing, but really it's something that I would recommend for someone who was recovering from illness or an operation, uh, someone who hasn't exercised before or, or very much in, say, the last five, ten years. Um, or for elderly people, um, it, it was not it, it was not something for someone who's relatively fit and healthy to uh, to use, or, or at least it, it wouldn't push you and challenge you in any in any way. 
So I, I, I used that and by January, I'd already been pushing myself to uh, run um, slightly longer distances. Um, and I found that I could run for an hour or more. So, oh, oh, oh. wait a minute, I'm getting my timelines confused. No, I'm not. No, I, I thought for a moment I was getting my, my timelines confused. Now, around about January last year, 2016, I remembered that in 2015, in the summer that year, I'd walked um, an 80-kilometre 80, 80 circuit round the outside of the M60, Manchester's orbital motorway. Um, and I'd, I'd done that in 15 and three-quarter hours, something like that. And the, the, there hadn't been a huge amount of, of, of training. I'd, uh, I'd continued walking long distances, but walking alone won't keep you fit. I do, on average, about, in winter, on average, I do about two hours walking every day, and that includes um, averaging it across the weekends and, and, and weekdays. Sometimes it'll be more. In summer, it's always m more than that. Uh, and that's not enough to keep you absolutely fit. But when I was planning that walk and, and raising money for charity, someone had said, um, I'd, I'd be impressed if you, if you, if you ran it. Um, this was leading up from, from a comment I'd made. And I filed that away and I thought, what if I did try to, to run this 80 kilometre circuit? So I found a, a, a marathon training programme and adapted it for running longer distances. And spent... Uh, January through to through to mid May, when the run was uh, last year, training myself um, gradually longer distances um, every morning. So there, there were three mornings during the week, and then a fourth uh, on Saturday. So I was running more and doing less of the other exercise, and my other exercises ended up kind of dropping out as I got close to the run. That was probably uh, a mistake, but it was kind of inevitable trying to balance my work commitments and, and time that I could devote to training. Um, and, and my runs gradually got longer, so I did a huge number of uh, runs at half marathon distance. I think it was, it may have been around a dozen or more, and there were at least two, possibly three runs of longer than full marathon distance before I got to the, the final run. And as it happened, I wasn't able to run the entire circuit. Um, I, I ran the first 52 kilometres, which I think is somewhere around... 32 miles, it was, it's slightly over marathon distance, but I, I, I got to the point at 52 kilometres where I, I fell, um, fell quite heavily. I was fine, I was still able to walk, I got up and walked a little, then was able to start running again, but after I'd been running for a couple of minutes I found I was coming into somewhere where I wasn't very sure of my footing and I didn't feel as stable running as I had um, for most of the circuit. It was just in the last sort of half hour that things had started to get a little uh, get a little shaky and at that point I'd been running five and a quarter hours something something like. Um, so I started to walk and this was coming into Clifton Park at Clifton Country Park, and so I, I, I walked through that, and I walked uphill from there to, to sort of get to a bit of the, the, the circuit that started to gradually come downhill. Uh, and I was never able to 
start running again. I did try a couple of times, but it was not not happening. So I, I completed the entire circuit on foot and I completed it in, I think it, it was a little outside of, of 10 hours, just a, a, a tiny bit more. But, you know, I, I completed it walking and I'd done more than half running. Um, and after that, I really didn't get back into exercise. I may have done a couple of long runs in the kind of fortnight after. Because I dropped the other exercise, the, the stuff at home, I didn't really get back into that. And I tried running some sort of June and July, maybe a little in August, but ended up, because of the job I was in, I'd moved from one department to another and they had much stricter uh, timekeeping. So I had less opportunity to run in the morning and I didn't really want to run in the evening. So I ended up, I think in each of those, those three months, there would be one week where I would try to restart my exercise and I would run twice and then not get back into it. So effectively from May onwards, or from, from June onwards last year, I really didn't exercise. And so there was almost nothing other than walking for about seven months. Uh, November last year, I started to think, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll restart this. And then it got close to Christmas. There was a lot of things to do, a lot on. I'd also uh, launched the, the podcast series, so that was taking up uh, a lot of time and energy and, 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 and brain space. And so I, I didn't really end up starting again until January um, this year, just before I went back to work. And so late, later last year, around about August, I, I did move back to my old job. And so I'm now in a job where timekeeping is less of an issue than it, than it had been for a lot of um, 2016. And, and so I, I just started again. I started with running and found that I was still enjoying it. I pushed myself actually quite hard and within... within four weeks of having restarted, I'd done this almost 30, 30 kilometre circuit to Stockport and back. Uh, hadn't quite run the entire distance the last 15 minutes uh, from Rambat Moss side. I'd walked, but I'd done you know, Wally Range to Stockport, Stockport to uh, to Moss side, so I was quite pleased with that. And so we've gone from half hour runs, which were quite challenging, to a three hour run in, in four weeks. I was uh, really quite pleased with. Now, for most of my adult life, my weight has been around about um, 72 to 74 kilos occasionally occasionally dropping below if I've been really poor, haven't been able to afford food, or been really ill. That's, that's very rare. And sometimes up to around 76, particularly if I've been, uh, you know, if, if my knees or my back have been causing a problem and I haven't been uh, able to exercise. Uh, when I started on the... Um, started on the, on the programme in November 2015, I was up to about 78 kilos, um, which was down to about 74 the last time I checked before I did the, the big run. Um, now, after a seven month layoff, because I hadn't adjusted my um, my diet back down as far as I should have. 
I, I wasn't eating as much by any means as I had been during training for the run, but I was still eating kind of slightly more than I needed. Uh, my weight had gone up to around 82 uh, kilos. Now, I've managed to get that down so far to about 80. I'm starting, you know, I'm continuing to uh, try and bring the diet back down. Um, and I've started to throw in some, some other exercises. So additionally, uh, to, to uh, add to the, uh, the running on three days a week and alternated with the strength and cardio, um, with, the, the, uh, with the yoga and stretches. On generally at least two days, I'm trying to do half an hour or more of... Uh, other exercises, whether that be uh, additional work with the with the dumb, with the dumbbells. I've still got the dumbbell fitness um, app, and I've got a, a bench which I can use uh, for that. Or whether it's work specifically on my abdominals. Um, it's it's. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to step up the program uh, a little. Not 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 go mad. I don't want to. Uh, develop my time to exercising, but you know I'm, I'm trying to get back into into, into a decent shape and, and, and flexibility, and that's kind of where we're at. This is this is why I've got this this shirt over. I've still got some fat uh, that I need to, or, or that I'd like to lose. At any rate, um, like I say, I don't want to be massively buff as it happens, but it'd be good to have a. Um, a visual record of um, how I managed to to lose weight uh, over the over the weeks and months, and um, you know to then check that I'm managing to maintain this. Uh, so um, there's something else I wanted to say. Yeah, running, uh, running. I I still I I'm surprised. How much I enjoy it. Um, it it's odd in as much as it feels less like exercise than the uh, the strength and cardio work. That might be a, a, a sign that I need to change the exercises that I'm doing with the app. Or look at another app. Or look at varying it because I'm I'm, I'm also finding on the whole um, the uh, work on abs and, and work with uh, dumbbells not not too not too challenging, but that's because that's relatively uh, recent. But I know that if I wake up in the morning and I don't feel don't feel like exercising, if I think oh, I can't face this, then I would rather I'd rather know that I'm going to run than that I'm going to work through something on an app. Um, and yeah, it's that that's kind of where that's kind of where I'm at at the moment. Um, so I'll I'll try and talk talk more next week I'll sort of talk I'll talk about some of the things that I've been doing, about uh, about my runs and, and about anything else that occurs to me that I've I've not covered. Uh, this week, so I'll see you then. And in the meantime, I'll be so there's uh, lots of other things uh, coming up all the time on uh, on Dead Media, and there's uh, other kind of long running uh, series that I'm I'm wanting to to start with that. So uh, yeah, see you soon. Bye.